Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss the 1950s quintessential bad boy, James Dean, and how you can use some of his style tips to add some casual cool to your looks. <laughs> best remembered as disaffected Jim Stark in the 1955 film Rebel Without a Cause. He was also known for his whirlwind life that was cut short at just 24 years of age. The casual cool of James Dean lives on in pop culture today. So there are several lessons to be learned from this bad boy of the silver screen. And despite being outside the typical mold for an entry into this series, we still believe that he is a gentleman of style. Now, by the way, this video is another installment in our How to Dress Like series, which you can find the full playlist of here. Let's take a moment to look at James Dean's life and career before we take a look at how he styled himself. James Byron Dean was born on February 8, 1931 in Marion, Indiana, the only child of Winton Dean, a farmer, and Mildred Marie Wilson. After his father left farming to become a dental technician, Dean moved with his family to Santa Monica, California. Now, Dean's mother died of cancer when he was just nine years old, and his father sent him to live with his aunt and uncle back in Fairmont, Indiana. In school, Dean was a great student. He played baseball and varsity basketball. He studied drama and competed in public speaking. After graduating from Fairmont High School in 1949, Dean moved back to California to live with his father and stepmother. He enrolled in Santa Monica College, majoring in pre-law. He later transferred to UCLA and changed his major to drama, which his father disapproved of. Now, while at UCLA, Dean was selected to play Malcolm in Macbeth and also participated in other acting workshops on campus. Now, in January 1951, he dropped out of UCLA to pursue a full-time career as an actor. Dean's first television appearance was in a Pepsi-Cola commercial, and his first speaking role was as John the Apostle in an Easter television special. While struggling to get jobs in Hollywood, Dean also worked as a parking attendant at CBS Studios in Hollywood. He met Rogers Brackett, a radio advertising executive who offered him professional advice. In October of 1951, Dean moved to New York City to become a stunt tester for the game show Beat the Clock. He also appeared in episodes of several CBS television series, such as Studio One and Lux Video Theater. He then gained admission to the Actors Studio to study method acting under Lee Strasberg. Proud of this accomplishment, Dean mentioned the Actors Studio in a 1952 letter to his family. And he's quoted as saying, the greatest school of the theater. It houses great people like Marlon Brando. Very few get into it. It is the best thing that can happen to an actor. I'm one of the youngest to belong. Now, it might seem hard to believe given his very strong image still today, but James Dean actually only starred in three movies before his death. Now, in 1953, director Ilya Kazan was looking for an actor to play the role of Cal Trask an emotionally complex young man, and John Steinbeck's novel, East of Eden. Kazan said that he wanted a Brando for the role, and the screenwriter suggested Dean. Steinbeck, who met with Dean, did not like him personally, but did find him perfect for the part. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, but much of Dean's performance in this film is actually unscripted. His most famous moment of improv occurs in a heated exchange between Cal and his father. Dean's outfits in this film range from workwear to casual ensembles with sweaters as well as four coat combinations and suits. In recognition for his performance in East of Eden, Dean was nominated in 1956 in the Academy Awards for the Best Actor in a Leading Role, the first official posthumous acting nomination in the Academy Awards history. Released in the spring of 1955, East of Eden was the only film starring Dean that he would see debut in his lifetime. Dean's next film, Rubble Without a Cause, will become hugely popular among teenagers. As Jim Stark, Dean gave the quintessential performance of a restless teenager, hiding behind a mask of indifference, yet yearning for love, recognition, and purpose. In the film's opening scene, a drunk Jim slouches on a curb. The conservative tan suit he wears marks him as an adult, but his movements are those of a frightened child. Jim suffers emotionally because of his father's weakness, and he's determined to not end up like him. He seeks out one daredevil challenge after the next falls in love with Judy, befriends outcast Plato, and finds himself wrapped up in a night of gang violence and murder. While some outfits in the film are more formal, Dean's primary outfit was that of a red Harrington jacket, a t-shirt, blue jeans, and boots. But more on that later. Following the successes of Eden and Rebel, Dean wanted to avoid becoming typecast as a rebellious teen, so he took on the role of Jet Rink, a Texan ranch hand in the movie Giant in 1956. Now the movie follows rancher Bick Benedict, played by Rock Hudson, his wife, Leslie, played by Elizabeth Taylor, and Rink. Dean can be seen in typical Western wear as a young man, 
and in a white tie when older. To portray an older version of his character in the film's later scenes, Dean would dye his hair gray and shave parts of it off to showcase a receding hairline. Dean received his second posthumous Best Actor Academy Award nomination for his role in Giant. At the time of his death, he was set to star as Rocky Graziano in Somebody Up There Likes Me in 1956. That film went on to win two Oscars, with Graziano played by Paul Newman. Tragically, Dean's life and White Hawk career were cut short at the young age of 24. A fan of auto racing since childhood, Dean planned on developing a racing career. Beginning in 1954, Dean started purchasing vehicles, including a motorcycle, the Tiger T110, and the Porsche 356. Just before filming began on Rebel, he competed in his first racing event in Palm Springs, California, winning first place in the novice class and second place in the main event. His racing continued in Bakersfield, California a month later. Now this is where he finished first in his class and third overall. Dean hoped to compete in the Indianapolis 500, but his busy schedule made it impossible. Warner Brothers barred him from all racing during the production of Giant. Dean had finished shooting his scenes and the movie was in post-production when Dean decided to start racing again. Dean was scheduled to compete at a racing event in Salinas, California, September 30th, 1955. German mechanic Rolf Uderich, who maintained Dean's Porsche 550 Spider, encouraged Dean to drive the car from Los Angeles to Salinas to break it in. The mechanic was also Dean's passenger. At 3.30 p.m., Dean was ticketed for speeding, but then continued on Route 466. At approximately 5.45 p.m., a car was passing through an intersection while turning ahead of the Porsche. Unable to stop in time, Dean's Porsche slammed into the driver's side of the turning car, bouncing across the pavement onto the side of the highway. Wutherwick was thrown from the car, but Dean was trapped inside with his neck broken. Remarkably, the other driver only had minor injuries. Despite medical attention, Dean was pronounced dead on arrival at the Paso Robles Warmer Medical Hospital at 6.20 p.m. An estimated 600 mourners attended his funeral, while another 2,400 fans gathered outside the building during the procession. Today, the crash site has been designated the James Dean Memorial Junction. Despite his tragic death, Dean's legacy and impact have only continued to grow. As we mentioned, American teenagers identified with Dean and the roles he played, especially that of Jim Stark in Rebel Without a Cause. Additionally, Dean's on-screen persona had an influence on the development of rock and roll music and culture. Elvis Presley said in a 1956 interview for Parade Magazine, I've made a study of Marlon Brando, poor Jimmy Dean, and of myself, and I know why girls go for us. We're something of a menace. I don't know anything about Hollywood, but I know you can't be sexy if you smile. You can't be a rebel if you grin. In their book on Dean, authors Lawrence Fraskella and Al Weisel said the industry trade magazine Music Connection even went as far as to call Dean the first rock star. Now with the Dean's life and legacy explored, let's now dig deeper into his signature style. Dean didn't abide by Hollywood standards of the time, instead choosing to live by his own rules. Many of the biggest male movie stars of the 1950s including Humphrey Bogart, Cary Cooper, or Cary Grant, who were of the previous generation, and they represented old Hollywood with their side-parted hairstyles and tailored suits. Meanwhile, Dean took a much more relaxed approach to dressing. Early in his career, he would show up barefoot with safety pins holding together his torn trousers, and he would arrive at lunch dates shirtless, wearing old jeans. His disheveled appearance and vulnerable screen performances helped define a new era of masculinity one that was characterized by a rugged blend of machismo and sensitivity. It's likely that the years he spent on an Indiana farm influenced his largely function-first wardrobe. The bright red Harrington jacket worn in Rebel will forever be his signature look, but Dean also wore a number of other lightweight jackets of greater versatility, including a leather biker jacket with a fur collar. This was clearly inspired by his hero, Marlon Brando. Now, prior to the 50s, the t-shirt was considered an undergarment, but Brando changed that in a streetcar named Desire in 1951, and Dean continued the trend in his own films. He likely favored t-shirts for their ease and simplicity, pairing them with denim, boots, penny loafers, and a cigarette. Today, an outfit consisting of a t-shirt and jeans is the norm for a great many men, but in Dean's time, it was an act of defiance, taking courage to wear. When dressing more conventionally, Dean's style was still simple and functional. He could wear a standard suit, sport coat, or blazer in colors like brown or navy, along with a shirt khakis, and loafers. He was often rebellious in his clothing choices, but projected a masculine image. Simply stated, James Dean was an individual. 
Now to round out today's video, let's discuss how you can incorporate James Dean style into your wardrobe. We'll give particular focus to his iconic rebel outfit, and we'll provide a few other tips and tricks as well. First, the Harrington Windbreaker. No piece of clothing is more closely associated to James Dean than the red Harrington Windbreaker he wore in Rebel. Named for its association to the character Rodney Harrington in the 1960s TV series Peyton Place, an alternatively called a blouson. It's a lightweight, waist-length piece of outerwear which layers quite well, even in the cooler months. And you can learn more about it in this video. Now you can look like Dean by getting one in bright red or in other colors like burgundy, beige, or navy, which would also be quite versatile. Similarly, wearing it with a t-shirt and boots and jeans will give you a distinctly 50s vibe, but the Harrington can be layered equally well with button-up shirts like flannels, odd trousers, and derby shoes or loafers. Now, alternatively, you could try a related piece of outerwear, like a suede bomber jacket worn with jeans for a more rugged look. As with the t-shirt, denim blue jeans have become a core piece of American wear since the 1950s. And it's important to note that Dean's performance in Rebel was definitely a factor. Now he wore a straight cut, not too loose and not too tight throughout the leg. Now they had a high rise and a medium blue wash. This classic style is produced by many brands even today, such as Levi's and American Apparel. In particular, the Levi's style known as the 501 is a popular choice. You can find our review on that style here. Now in Rebel, Dean wore the Rider style by Lee. Given the time period, Dean's trousers had a fuller cut and a higher rise than what might be seen today. Now you can opt to wear a higher rise pair if you truly want to replicate that 50s aesthetic. Now for more modern take, go for a contemporary rise and a dark wash and with something that tapers close to the ankle. In either case, your jeans should project an effortless working man masculinity. Layer your outfit with a leather jacket and leather boots. Now this ensemble will be worthy of both Dean and Marlon Brando. Finally, cuff or pin roll your jeans to show off your footwear and for some added extra style. Next, the t-shirt. Along with Marlon Brando, James Dean transformed the t-shirt from being a utilitarian undergarment into being the backbone of a hyper casual attire. If you're going for that simplistic style that Dean was famous for, a t-shirt is an absolute essential. As with any other garment, fit is key. Now, Dean wore t-shirts that were well fitted through the chest and accentuated his arms, all without hugging them. Now, if you do plan to wear a t-shirt visibly, don't wear the same type of t-shirt you would wear as an undergarment. You know, the kind of you get in a multi-pack from Target or Walmart. Instead, spend a few more dollars to get something that will flatter your form, something that can stand up to multiple launderings. Now, to look like Dean, pair the t-shirt with traditional blue jeans and boots. You can take a look at this video for six different outfit suggestions. Boots. In Rubble Without a Cause, Dean rounded out his iconic outfit of Harrington jacket, t-shirt, jeans, with a pair of dark yacht per boots. Now, whether you're deliberately attempting such a look or not, leather boots should be a staple in any man's footwear collection. Now, they're versatile in terms of formality and ensemble. They're incredibly comfortable and highly durable. A quality pair, maintained well, can last decades. And one of the most popular styles of boots today is the Chelsea boot. Now this pairs equally well with dress trousers, semi-formal pants, as well as denim. Now picking up a pair of Chelsea boots or other related styles in black or brown will provide a lot of opportunity for some different combinations. Now just remember, quality footwear is an investment and boots is no exception. Snapping up any random pair you might see on sale only means that you're probably gonna have to buy another pair again in a few months or even a few years. Instead, buy from a reputable source that uses high quality materials. Now this will help you save money in the long run in addition to helping you look your best. Next, the polo shirt. Now when not wearing a t-shirt, Dean can be seen wearing its slightly dressier sibling, the polo. Now in this way, he was adopting the prep look that also defined his generation. Such a look is incredibly simple to achieve and is definitely timeless. Dark solid colors are the safest and most versatile options. These can be worn tucked in or untucked. It all depends on the formality level of your overall outfit. Polo shirts can pair easily with both cotton trousers, like flannels or chinos, as well as with denim. Their versatility is what makes them a true style staple. You can also wear a polo under a sport coat, then pair it with odd trousers and loafers. Now this is a more semi-formal ensemble, but it's still relaxed. Sweaters. From a starring role in East of Eden to his iconic photo shoot for Life magazine in 1954 entitled Torn Sweater, Dean was also frequently seen in knitwear. In Eden, he wore a buff-colored v-neck over a white dress shirt paired with khakis. For life, as the title would suggest, a worn and frayed black mock turtleneck 
was the centerpiece of this photo shoot. Each of these styles of sweater, while different in attitude, are still versatile. As such, men looking to try Dean-inspired netwear can do so by looking into neutral tones in V-neck or crew neck sweaters, pairing them with a pair of khakis, chinos, or even denim. Alternatively, a black or similarly dark turtleneck could be paired with some odd trousers, or even dark wash denim for a reserved monochromatic look. You'll be safest with knitwear when avoiding extravagant shades, and instead sticking with things like grays, blues, blacks, browns, even greens. Such colors are fairly universal with odd trousers and boots, ensuring a variety of styling combinations. The Breton shirt. Hailing from the Brittany region of France, the first iteration of Breton shirts were designed with tightly knit wool to protect fishermen from water and wind. They eventually evolved into a blue and white striped shirt. Sailors have sported that look since the beginning of the 19th century. And in 1858, the garments were officially adopted into the French naval uniform. Coco Chanel first brought Breton shirts into the realm of popular fashion. And from there, they were adopted by such icons such as James Dean, Audrey Hepburn, and even John Wayne. Some men consider stripes difficult to pull off, but this does not have to be the case. Going for garments with narrow stripes and simple color combinations can be a great first step. The long sleeved shirt inspired by the original Breton shirt will be a great way to start incorporating stripes into your wardrobe. Sunglasses and eyeglasses. Whenever you spend time in the sun, sunglasses are both stylish and functional, protecting your eyes and adding an unmistakable element of cool. Dean knew this and he often sported a pair of round, tinted sunglasses with a metallic frame. And while such styles remain very popular today, you can choose any style that you prefer, just so long as they fit your face shape and skin tone well. In addition to wearing sunglasses when outdoors, Dean could also be seen indoors wearing a pair of brown, round tortoiseshell glasses when reading. It's a testament to his inherent sense of style that he was able to pair a traditional look of the tortoiseshell glasses with his otherwise very casual style, especially when outdoors and wearing sunglasses. Wearing a lighter fabric in the summer, such as linen, it's a great way to stay cool and maintain a smart aesthetic. Though perhaps not to the same degree of his clothing, Dean was also quite popular for his hairstyle. His disheveled quiff-like pompadour projected a devil may care vibe. Now this was in line with the rest of his sartorial choices. Before Dean, the quiff wasn't a popular style. It would be considered too unprofessional for most men. Dean made the style his own and it's since become a popular style for many men, even having another moment in the 2010s. Now if you do decide to change your hairstyle to look more like Dean's, go to a skilled stylist who can cut your hair to the proper length. With the bang somewhere between your eyebrows and the bottom of your eye, and with the back and sides scissor cut relatively long, this will help create a rounded look from the front. After a cut and a shower, simply take a small amount of pomade and work it into your hands to get the pomade nice and warm. Work the pomade into your hair evenly, making sure all the hair has some product on it. Then take a hair dryer and a comb or a brush and on low heat, blow dry your hair. Then style as desired. With a bit of hairspray for hold, the James Dean Quiff is yours. And while the word icon certainly has become overused in recent decades, it seems quite fair that it does suit James Dean. Whether it's because of his genuine talent as an actor, or the fact that his death at the age of 24 left him frozen in time to the moving going public. The combination of his rebellious characters and his casual style created the perfect storm for inspiration. His style was largely timeless quality, featuring pieces simply rooted in their functionality and versatility. Watch any of his films and peruse a few photos, and his confidence and cool shine through. Do you have a favorite James Dean performance or wardrobe item? Share with us in the comments below. Today I'm wearing a dark navy turtleneck with dark wash jeans and dark brown leather boots. And of course, finishing off the outfit with a pair of Fort Belvedere socks. Check out the Fort Belvedere shop here for socks like these. <laughs> Thank you.